Hello, my name is Matthias Magdowski. I'm a scientific co-worker at the Otto von Gehrig University in Magdeburg, where I work at the chair of electromagnetic compatibility within the Institute for Medical Engineering. In this short talk, I would like to explain some measurements that we did in one of our reverberation chambers, where we measured uh, the coupling or the scattering between two leaky cables. So this is how such a leaky cable looks like. It's practically a coaxial cable um, with some slots or apertures or openings in the outer shield so that this cable then starts to radiate. That's why these cables are also sometimes called leaky feeder antennas and they are used in underground facilities like mines or tunnels to get um, mobile communication there or to get radio transmission there. Um, two mobile receivers, for example, for um, mobile communication with cell phones or for, for Wi-Fi access. And the idea is to use such cables also on aircraft um, to get Wi-Fi reception and mobile communication for the passengers from Pico cells or from Wi-Fi access points. And the problem in an aircraft or the thing with an aircraft is that is that of course it has some outer metallic fuselage which works as a cavity resonator um, so we get reflections inside uh, this resonator from the walls this acts like a, an electrically large cavity and then uh, these fields within there can be described by statistical theory and they can also be replicated in the reverberation chamber and we have such a reverberation chamber in Magdeburg this is an older picture of it um, so our idea was to do measurements there with different leaky cables. And what you can see here on this photograph is a mode stirrer. And the use of this mode stirrer is to change the electromagnetic boundary conditions of this resonator so that we can move the nodes and anti-nodes of the standing wave pattern of the modes inside this reverberation chamber or mode stirrer chamber through the room. And you can also see one of the antennas here that we used for the measurement logarithmic periodic dipole antenna. So after this short introduction, I would like to give you some more details of our measurement setup and, and procedure and then explain and discuss the results that we got. Um, and we of course measured the quality factor of our reverberation chamber from the coupling from the scattering between the antennas and then we also measured the reflection coefficients and transmission coefficients um, at and between these leaky cables and at the end of course I will draw some conclusions. So let's have a look at the measurement setup. The, we measure two different types of cables. They are called RLKU. Uh, and this cable works from 30 megahertz up to 2.7 gigahertz and we measured a second cable which is called Raya and you can see that the frequency range here is a little smaller. And we did the measurements with a four port vector network analyzer and then you can think okay if you have four ports and um, two ports are already used for the two antennas then you have two ports left for the cable. So you can take one cable and connect uh, it to the, uh, to the other four, to the other two ports of the four port vector network analyzer so that you measure only the scattering between the two antennas and the two ends of one cable. And you can do this for, we have done this for the first cable and the second cable. So these are two measurements here. Then we measured the coupling only between the cables. So really uh, between the four line ends of the two cables here this is the second configuration and then we put um, the two antennas uh, back into the measurement and measure the coupling between two antennas and one line end of each of the two leaky cables and then you can think okay what do you do with the other line end of the leaky cables and you can just leave them open or you can terminate them with 50 ohm and if they are open circuited of course there will be a higher much stronger reflection at the end of these leaky cables so there will be waves traveling back and forth and if they are matched and terminated with 50 ohm then there will be no reflections. And so in total these are five different measurements. Um, and here is um, yeah, some, some more detailed schematic of this. So this is the first variant, the two antennas uh, and just one of these cables measuring at two ports with this vector network analyzer which is controlled by a computer and the computer at the same time also controls the stirrer or the motor controller for the stirrer. 
And the second configuration then is um, without the antennas, we, we still left the antennas inside uh, the chamber and terminated them with 50 ohms so that the quality factor of the chamber will not, will not change too much. Um, still, I've omitted them here in the schematic um, and then measured at the four ports of these two cables. And the last variant measuring between the antennas and one port of the two cables at the same time. And then the other end of the cable here in this case has been left open or was terminated with 50 ohm. And these are the four different configurations. And um, so the parameters of the measurement, as you can see, the chamber is quite large, like a larger room. The first cavity resonance of this chamber is at around 30 megahertz. But of course, you cannot do two meaningful measurements at uh, this frequency. And the lowest usable frequency with proper field statistics is somewhere around 150 megahertz. So for the measurement, we decided uh, to measure from 75 megahertz, knowing that this is not really meaningful, um, up to let's say 150, 200 megahertz, and then up to this um, 2.7 gigahertz in quite small frequency steps with lots of frequency points, because it, it goes quite fast to measure this high number of frequency points. And still later on, you have the option to do some frequency steering uh, to improve the statistics. We, we increase the sweep time a little bit to always at each frequency step really reach a steady state within the chamber, uh, measured 72 stirrup positions and use this intermediate frequency bandwidth of the vector network analyzer to get a good compromise between measurement speed and dynamic range and accuracy. And because of this uh, small frequency step and high number of points, Mm, you, you capture a lot of data around 240 megabyte for, for each of the five different configurations that we measured. But this is today, of course, totally okay to measure this quite high number of, um, of data. Okay, then here there are some photographs of this measurement setup. Um, so this is where, where you can see where there's just one cable. We are measuring at the two ends of the one cable. Here are the two antennas, the logarithmic periodic dipole antennas. Um, this is a setup of uh, the measurement between um, the two cables where, where both ends of both cables are connected to the vector network analyzer. And you can see that the antenna here and the antenna there, that they are still left inside the measurement, but terminated with 50 ohm as said to do not change the quality factor um, or the, yeah, the setup of the reverb chamber too much. And this is a final photograph of the measurement where we measured between the antennas and uh, one port of the two cables and then the other ports of the cables. Here the ends have been left open like here um, just with this plastic cover or have been matched with 50 ohm. And once again here because of the open circuit strong reflection coefficient there will be strong reflections waves traveling back and forth along the cable. And here there will be just waves in one direction along the cable, um, no reflection back. This is the vector network analyzer that we used for the measurement. It's a uh, Roder and Schwarz uh, Z1B8 going from nine kilohertz up to 8.4 gigahertz or 8.5 gigahertz. And then we used such an automatic calibration kit uh, for the unknown through open short match. Um, calibration, which is very handy because if you would do this calibration by hand uh, manually, it would be really a pain to, to do all these configurations at the four ports. So this is, this is really very useful for this type of measurements to have such an automatic calibration kit. Um, and here are some final pictures of the connection between the leaky cables and um, the measurement ports or the feed throughs um, for the configuration for both leaky cables and for the cables um, and the antennas terminated uh, with 50 ohm on open circuited. And the VNA then of course was behind this feed through outside the reverberation chamber. Okay, so then let's have a look at some results. And at first, uh, as said, we analyze the quality factor of the chamber using this well-known formula. Um, and what you, what you need there is the scattering between 
the TX antenna and the RX antenna and the reflection at the TX antenna, the volume of the chamber, which is around 180 cubic meters, uh, the wavelengths or the frequency and the efficiency of the logarithmic periodic dipole antennas that we approximated as 50% uh, as 80%, which is quite usual. And this is the source where this yeah, quite well-known formula in the reverb chamber community comes from. And so then this is the measured quality factor of the chamber. As you can see, it is around 10,000 to 15,000 above one gigahertz. And uh, usually this curve would have a much higher statistical noise. So as said, we did some frequency steering and used the running average over 101 AJ adjacent frequencies to, um, to smooth this curve a little bit. And, and you can see that between these different configurations, as one would expect, the quality factor does not change too much. Okay, so then we can have a look at the reflection coefficients. And at first, uh, here's the reflection coefficient at this Raya cable. You can see that it's quite small. So the maximum value is something like 0 0.07. Um, and that there are some kind of these peaks here and the reason for these peaks is probably that all these small apertures and openings uh, that are in periodic distances along the cable of course are some 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 inhomogeneities in the cable and, and each of these slot each of these apertures causes a small reflection but in total then um, they add up a little bit so they are higher reflection coefficients at somehow periodic um, frequencies but but still the cable is of course very well matched and the RLKU cable is even better matched um, and we also do not see these um, periodic peaks or increases in the reflection coefficient there and you can also see that it agrees very well between the different configurations that we have measured so this perfectly makes sense and then of course if you measure the reflection coefficient at the open circuited cables there's also a much higher reflection at the beginning um, and if we would really go to very small frequencies it would be probably one um, but due to losses along the cable and the the radiation of the cable it drops down with frequency, but again, there are some peaks here and there, and there's some dip here where we do not really have a good explanation why this happens. So if you have some idea, feel free uh, to comment this or to, to write us a message what you think what causes these peaks and dip here. So then we can also take a look at the transmission between the antennas and the cables. So here you can see the transmission between the antenna and uh, the Raya cable. And it's, it's, as you can see, it's quite small. It's about 10 times, 100 times smaller than the coupling between uh, the antennas itself. And if the cable is open circuited at the end, of course, there will be a little higher coupling due to this forward and backward traveling waves. And the same can be seen for the RLKU cable. Once again, here it's about an order of magnitude smaller. There's also some, some uh, peak here where we have not really a good explanation why this happens uh, for these two different configurations. Mm -hmm. But for the open circuited case, once again, it's a little higher. And then the last plot here shows the transmission or the coupling between the cables. And you can see that this is once again, an order of magnitude smaller. Um, changes a little bit between the different configurations because we are already quite close to the dynamic range um, of the measurement and there's an increase here once again for these open circuited cables. So to summarize we measured the scattering between leaky cables in the reverberation chamber. Uh, we measured quite small reflection coefficients at the well-matched leaky cables and for the coupling the coupling between the antennas dominates between an antenna and the leaky cable, it's about 10 to 100 times smaller. Between the leaky cables, it's about 1,000 to 10,000 times smaller than between just the antennas. Future work would be the comparison with the simulation model. 
or analysis of the field distribution inside the chamber or the aircraft, let's say, and the measurement of the radiation efficiency of the antennas. So this concludes my talk. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you have questions, please feel free to, to mail them to us or to comment below this video if this is possible. And we will also publish and distribute uh, the raw data of the measurement, the MATLAB files, the presentation and so on on my ResearchGate account. Thanks for watching.